Hello friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. Welcome to Make and Take Tuesday. This is a little series that I do on my YouTube channel where I introduce a new product, paper collection tool, die technique, and we make something beautiful together. Today, I am working with Stamparia's gorgeous sunflower art collection. Y'all know I love sunflowers, so I'm very, very excited to be able to pull this out and have a play with it. It is stunning. It's one of the most beautiful collections I think Stamparia has ever put out, and that is saying something. So this is the 8x8 pad. I love the clothesline. I am... Um, I was falling asleep last night and this idea popped into my head and I was like, don't forget this idea. So we're going to make something kind of fun today. I'm, I'm sort of excited about it and um, I think you're going to like it too. It's a great gift item and um, it's going to be good. So there's the 8x8. Eight eight. I have two of these. I really like the size of the patterns in the 8x8 eight eight because they lend themselves well. But then I also like having the larger images from the 12 by 12 so I also have the 12 by 12 and because I knew I was going to love 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 this collection I also bought a couple of extra sheets that I just couldn't resist because they were so very beautiful so I mean, this collection is just forget about it I got because I because they're fun I got some of these wooden shapes and then I bought the die cuts and I bought the cards those are fun to use in mini albums and folios and then I also got what are these called adhesive paper cutouts Before we get started with this tutorial, I know a lot of you like to see the finished album first. So here we are. This measures, ended up measuring, it's pretty big. Um, if I'm recalling, it is, this ended up measuring six by eight and a half. And we've got a brown paper cover and then canvas cover over that for extra strength. I built up my little collage here with a mix of handmade flowers and a few little prima flowers. Most of them are handmade though. Little watering can, little bee and sunflower charm, this wonderful wooden button, little clothesline action going on up here. I guess I've got a little few little glue webbies, hot off the press guys. Um, and then this ribbon closure. Here's the spine and then around the back. So this real pretty, wood finish on the back. Let's undo the ribbon and see inside. We open this out and we start with this slash pocket on the left and a junior legal pad tucked inside, but it's a double pocket. So in between, I put in this little image from the paper collection so you can do some journaling. And then this is one of the images from the eight by eight pad with just a little scrap. And when you use up this junior pad, you can just put a new one in and pop it into the pocket. Over here, we've got our, this is where the canvas wrapped around the second spine. We have a sweet little magnetic hidden journaling spot and some faux buttons and a faux key. And then this is a flip page, a magnetic flip page. We have a little photo mat here and a bookmark, a pretty bookmark, in a belly band on the right. So that is this first turn page. Then this opens out, and we have a box pocket in the center, and we have a set of four sunflower note cards. These are super sweet. We'll make these together, and they have the matching envelopes, and the envelopes are stamped and embossed, so really a pretty gift. Then over here, we've got a little magnetic buckle. We have a little, uh, just a pretty art page. This flips open. Here's a pocket on the back, a little envelope to hold ephemera, a little photo mat, 
These papers, you guys, are just so delightful to work with. And here's another little flip page with another pocket. And this is a little pullout with these pretty images. And you can do journaling or photos on the back. So that goes in this pocket. Then over here, we've got the cutest little craft envelopes. I'm going to show you how to make these. And inside, we've got a little wee... Uh -huh. image from the 8x8 eight eight. and these just tuck right in here and they stay really nicely. This one has a little tag on the envelope. Here's the little truck. I think I had a tag for this one. I must have dropped it. But anyway, super cute. And that's the whole folio that you're going to learn how to build. These make the most beautiful gifts. It's always nice to have gifts around this time of year on hand so that you, you're ready for hostess situations, Christmas, Thanksgiving, holidays, all those things. And this is such a fun folio to build. It has chipboard covers, so it's super sturdy. I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's go ahead. Let's get started and get our craft on and start making the Sunflower Art Trifold Folio. All right, my friends, the first thing we're going to do is build the base. This is going to be a wrapped folio with chipboard covers. So I have cut from medium weight chipboard three, six inch by eight and a half inch pieces and two three quarter inch by eight and a half inch pieces. Obviously these are the spines. And then this paper that we're going to wrap it with, this is, um, you know how when you buy rolls of wrapping paper, the inner core is this thick craft I like this because it's really sturdy, but it's not thick, too thick to fold. So that is what we're going to wrap our folio with. This way we don't waste a ton of our designer paper, but we still have a nice cover. So I'm just going to put my adhesive down, and I want one inch. I cut my paper to... Um, 24 inches, I went 24 inches just to make sure I was going to have enough by 10 and a half inches high. And I want one inch on the top and the bottom and the side. So there's my first one. I'm going to take my first spine and use my adhesive. And you can use score tape if you like. I do like using liquid glue you know, some sort of good liquid adhesive when I do this because um, two reasons. One, it gives me a little wiggle room. And two, um, I, I, I feel like it holds up better. So did you see how I put my ruler in here to make a spacer between my spine and my cover? That's a really good trick because if you get too close, um, you won't be able to fold, which, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? Of our trifold. And I'm pretty generous with the adhesive. I want this to really hold. So again, I'm going to come in with my ruler. And line this up. Make sure I'm straight at the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to come in with my second spine piece. I had this idea as I was falling asleep last night. I was like, what are we going to do? And I was like, oh, let's make this little like trifold folio that actually doubles like as a desk companion. These make really good gifts. Um, I still like to write things on paper. I know that makes me a dinosaur, but I remember things better when I write them down. Um, I, I also use notepad on my phone. Everybody does, right? But I use that for short term, like if I'm running into the grocery store real quick or something, 
I like having, I like the act of putting ink to paper or pencil. I'm actually a pencil girl. That's how antique I am. I like working with pencils. All right. So I'm just going to spread that glue out with my bone folder. And we've got a good bit of overage here. Um, I might trim this off just so that it's not cumbersome. So the way I do that is I just come in with my ruler and a craft knife. And I'm just going to cut. This cuts really nicely, too. And I have my glass mat underneath my Glassboard Studios glass mat, which is a wonderful, it just makes your craft knife glide. So this we can throw away. Now I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna go around the edges of this. And this is gonna leave a little bit of a crease, just enough that um, it'll make it a little easier to wrap these edges. And this is a big, I know you probably can't even see what I'm doing over here on the left. This is a big piece. So um, I'm trying to make sure I'm all the way in, but it's you're just going to have to trust me, I guess, when I'm on these outer edges. So now I'm going to remove my magnets and I'm going to fold. See how nicely that folds? And that's because we did that little pre-crease action. And then when you're doing this folding, actually come in and go in between. That's just going to encourage that. And do this all the way around. So what if you don't have this paper, like if you're not like me and you didn't save the inside rolls of your wrapping paper? Well, you could use lightweight craft paper. Um, you would have to join your panels, of course, to make sure that you have enough length. Um, or you could buy, I think the Dollar Tree even sells like rolls of craft, you know, like that you would use for wrapping packages and stuff. So you could use that. But I like this because it's free and I really like the weight of it. It's a very, very, very good weight. All right, so now we're gonna trim out our corners. And do you see where this crease intersects with this crease? We want to cut right through that spot. Don't come in too close because if you do, you're gonna have a little bald spot. But don't go out too far because if you do, you're gonna have like a little nubbin left, but those can be trimmed off. Better to cut out too far than in too close. And I hope you can see this. This is the kind of thing that's a little bit unwieldy to do on camera. All right. We tore right here, but I think that's going to be okay because I think the adhesive, I think we can catch that with our adhesive and we'll be fine. So now, now we add our adhesive and I'm going to go right along the outside edge and then I'm going to get and I'm actually going to double it up because I want this to stick well. Okay. And you're gonna do this on all four sides, just what you just saw me do there.
So see how these corners meet? That is what you want each corner to look like. All right? And this paper folds really nicely and we didn't waste like a ton of our beautiful designer paper in there so hold on I'll show you how to line to line this guy I've taken two sheets of 65 pound craft cardstock which is a good weight for what we're gonna do and this one is 11 by eight and a quarter and this one is nine and by eight and a quarter. And we're gonna put these down. And before I do, I wanna add extra adhesive to my spine area. But I'm gonna put this down. And I'm pretty generous, as you can see, with the adhesive on this because I want this to really stick. So I'm going to line this up over here. Going over this with the paper towel helps spread that adhesive out so that it gets good coverage. Take my bone folder. I'm going to gently come in here, lift this if I can, because I got a little bubble there in my spine. over here and crease okay and now I can lay this down okay so this is a really good basic Trifold folio size. You can do a lot with this and go a lot of different directions with this. Okay, so see how nicely that spine is attached right there. So now we're going to take our shorter piece, we're going to overlap just a little bit here. And again, I'm going to add extra adhesive to my spine area. I'm going to put my adhesive and I don't normally put adhesive down this heavily the only time I use the wide tip on my adhesive bottle is when I'm doing this sort of a job so I just overlapped that about a quarter of an inch and I'm lining it up and I'm coming over here to my spine and I'm pressing into my spine 
and I'm bending my spine. You just kind of have to take your time with this and um, enjoy the process. And of course, if you don't like doing it this way, buy a pre-made folio, but it's always fun to know how to do this stuff yourself. Um, one of the things I've learned, I've been doing this long enough now that I've seen products that you really love come and go. One example was the little um, ATC box from Graphic 45. They just stopped making it, and that was one of my favorite things. So it's good to learn how to do these things yourself so that if a company stops making them, you can still use them. There we go. Covered on the outside, covered on the inside. And it's nice and sturdy because of those chipboard covers. It's gonna last a nice long time. And of course we're gonna add designer papers to the covers on the inside, which strengthens it that much more. Okay, so I want to try something a little bit different here. I have a piece of natural canvas. You can buy this from joanne.com. You can even order it online. You just have to order um, a pretty big piece of it. And I like this because it's really strong and it adds texture and it's actually gonna add strength to the spine. So this particular piece that I've cut is 12, about 15 and 3 eighths inches wide by eight and three eighths inches high. And what I've done is I've done a zigzag stitch around the edges because it's gonna fray unless you fold it under and do all that. And I just didn't, I didn't wanna do anything that involved. So once you pull your little strings and it hits the stitching, it won't fray anymore. So what we're going to do, this is a little bit tricky, but I've lined the entire back of it with half inch score tape. And I'm going to take off about three strips of score tape at a time. And we're going to wrap this around our folio. Um, I thought about using my adhesive, my liquid adhesive, but I think, I think this is going to be the better option. And the reason I'm only doing a few at the time is because I'm afraid I won't keep it straight if I try to do the whole thing at once. And you can see it's not perfect, but that's all right. I don't, I don't necessarily want it to be perfect. Um, it's kind of a rustic paper collection. Sunflowers are kind of a rustic flower. So I'm okay if it's not perfectly perfect. But I wanna, you know, I wanna do a good job as I can laying this down. So now I'm gonna open this out and I'm gonna take off a few more strips. And I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way around both spines because I really wanna strengthen those spines. I'm just using my bone folder to really press that score tape into, onto the liner. And at the same time, I can press out any little bubbles and stuff. I did iron this pretty thoroughly. Um, before I stitched. And if you don't like, if you don't like this, you don't have to do the canvas cover. I just, I love adding texture and textiles like this. It's, it makes me happy, but you can just use paper. It's perfectly fine. Do you, do what you wanna do.
Ooh, that's nice. Okay. And then this piece is gonna come in here. So see, all the spines are covered. Wow, I really like the way that turned out. And this wraps around, so we're gonna have this little edge in here, but it's gonna be fine. It's actually gonna look really cool. So there we go. There is our outside covered with canvas. And I think I'm pretty pleased with the way that turned out. It's nice and tight. It has a few little wrinkles in it, but um, we're gonna put paper on top of this. So that's not a bad thing, but yay. I like the way this turned out. So for my 12 by 12 paper pad, I've cut these two five and a half by eight inch panels. And what I did was I cut this part of the border off the bottom and I cut this part of the flowers off the top. So this way I get these. Now I'm actually gonna flip these and this is gonna go on the back cover and this is gonna go on the front cover and this is gonna go on the spine and this is gonna go into my scrap pile. So I'm gonna distress these edges and this is just gently, I'm not like putting a ton of pressure here, I'm just roughing up the edge of my paper, okay? And this just creates a little texture along the edge and it lends itself to a rustic, distressed look. Of course, if you don't like this, you don't have to have it. Now, if you don't have a distressing tool, um, Tim Holtz makes one too that's like a little round, looks like a key ring thing, but you can also use the blade of your scissor if you're careful. Just don't put a lot of pressure on, but you can get the same effect that way. I just like this way because I feel like I'm less likely to mess things up. This is an old Prima. I don't even know if you can get this, but I know you can get the Tim Holtz one. So, and it's just called a distressing tool. Then I wanna ink my edges and I'm gonna use my favorite gathered twigs and just kind of skip along that outside edge. This helps create a sort of a frame. And um, I like I like to do this with vintage style papers. I don't do this so much with, you know, more modern paper collections, but with vintage, it's a very nice look. And if you don't like the distressing and the inking, then don't do it. Do you, do what makes your eye happy. That is the way it works. So now I'm gonna take a sheet of this 65 pound weight craft card stock, and I just want the tiniest craft border on here. So I don't know, what is that? Like a 16th of an inch maybe? I don't think it's quite an 18th, an eighth of an inch. And I just put a tiny bit of um, adhesive on the back because I'm gonna go stitch around the edges of this on my sewing machine. So I'm just showing you this is how I, this is how I do this. See? And then I'll just trim along the top. And I know for those of you who are accountants and scientists, that makes you crazy because you like measurements, but I'm an artist, so I fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> That's how that works. I'm gonna do the same thing with this other piece, and then I'm gonna stitch and we'll come back and we'll put these on our cover. Okay, so when I tried these on my covers, I felt like they were a little, like it didn't quite, it didn't quite cover the way I wanted it to. I had a little too much of the canvas showing. I just want a little bit of the canvas showing. So I went into my eight by eight pad. I found this one with the truck and I cut, I don't know what, I, I didn't measure it. I just cut so that I didn't take the truck. Let's see, what do we got? Two and three eighths inches. And of course this is eight inches high. And we are going to add this to the spine. 
And I am going to use my liquid adhesive for this because um, we're going to be also laying over it. So I'm just putting this down. I'm going to come in with my bone folder and just press it really well onto that canvas so that it will adhere. I was pretty generous with the adhesive too. All right, I think that looks really good. And now I can put, yeah, I like the way that looks, guys. That, that looks really super to me. So now I can glue my back cover down. So I real quick pulled my cover and I've got this old ribbon. I think this came from Stampin' Up! Like, I don't even know how many years ago. I've had it for a very long time, but it's perfect to go with this collection. So now that I've done that, because I want my ribbon closure underneath, I'm going to have to reapply my adhesive and put my cover down. And that was almost a bad thing that happened, but we caught it in the nick of time, so. And I know, I can hear you. <laughs> I can hear you saying, why are you covering up the canvas? Well, mostly the canvas was there to strengthen that cover. I'm just gonna put some score tape down. Just like one piece. beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to let this dry. I think we're going to stop here for today. Um, maybe I'll do a Wednesday, Thursday, and we'll finish this one up in three days because it's going to take a bit to get everything done. But that's for today. Make it take Tuesday. Come back tomorrow. I'll have the next part of this put together by then. And then Thursday, we'll finish it. All right, guys. That's it for me for today. Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. Don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll get all the parts of this video. All right, bye.